Good morning, OGC. Welcome to WOCO at 9 a.m. on Sundays. And if you want to watch us on YouTube, that can be on our channel, O'Connell Gospel Chapel page. Well, this morning we're going to continue our series of how to receive encouragement while facing suffering and trials. And so this title today is that Peter is talking to his, his uh, listeners, his readers, uh, about now talking about spiritual growth. And so the question is, are you stuck in your spiritual growth? Are you not moving forward? Are you not maturing? Do you, have you ever wondered why you're spinning your wheels time and time again, not getting any closer to God, not really taking anything out of the Word of God, not craving the Word of God? Do you know what it may be? So what's stopping you? That's a very broad question, but can you identify it? Can you narrow it down? Now, this might be difficult because it isn't always apparent to us. Matter of fact, it's oftentimes hidden in our hearts. Now, if we think about sins, most believers wouldn't commit murder. Well, we may have a passing thought, but we would never do it. Or steal from others. Or commit sexual sins. These are very grievous sins. However, if you haven't committed any of these sins, what is still stopping you from moving forward in your spiritual growth? What would it be? Our text here this morning, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, sheds a light on what that could be. Now, Peter, in this text, he says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy and slander of every kind. And so those are the five deadly sins. These are the very sins that can stop you dead in your tracks in your walk with God, but also it can hinder your love for one another. So these five deadly sins, these vices, will destroy our relationships and will destroy community in the body of Christ. Let's say them again. Malice, Deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. These are vices. And Peter says, therefore, and we'll find out what he means, therefore, because you got to go back into chapter 1. He says, rid yourselves of these things. So let's look at those five sins. We may not even think that, well, I would never do any of those, but let's, let's get a definition on these five deadly sins. What is malice? It's an unforgiving spirit. It's, it's carrying bitterness in your heart. In other words, you have a chip on your shoulder. You just haven't forgiven that person at church. Do you hold malice? Peter says get rid of all malice. Deceit, what is that? That's being dishonest, right? It's like Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5. They lied to Peter, but they also ultimately lied to the Holy Spirit, and they paid for it. They were deceitful people. Hypocrisy. Oh, my goodness. It's acting out a part while concealing your true motives. Listen to what the Proverbs say. Proverbs chapter 26, if you have your Bibles. Proverbs 26. And then we'll look at verses 23 through 28. Now here they're talking about hypocrisy. It says here that like a coating of glaze over earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. A malicious man disguises himself with his lips, but his heart harbors deceit. Though his speech is charming, don't believe him, for seven abominations fill his heart. His malice may be concealed by deception, but his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Well, so we see here about deceit. 
we see about hypocrisy it is not being who you say you are. Well, Jesus talks about that in Matthew 23. If you have your Bibles, turn there. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 3. Jesus said to the crowds and to the disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. They're hypocrites. And, and that can be something that we can experience as well. There is, our motives, our hidden motives are deep inside and that we act one way but do another. Let's look at another one. Envy. What is that? Being jealous of someone's success. It, it says in Proverbs 27.4. Let, let's read that. Proverbs 27.4. Proverbs 27, 4 says, Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? That's what envy is. Jealousy has a critical outlook. You know what it is? We see the goods about deeds of others, but we won't mention them because we're jealous. Someone does something well, we're jealous, so we won't even mention what they, but we'll mention anything else, maybe that's negative, but we won't say anything positive about those people. The last one here is slander. Abusive words, falsely spoken, that damages a person's reputation. It says in Psalm 105, let's look at that. Psalm 105 get to that, Psalm 105, and then it says uh, Psalm 101, I'm sorry, Psalm 101, verse 5. It says this, whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, him will I put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, him will I not endure. See, that's slander. The, that's slandering his neighbor. But it says, whoever slander, slanders his neighbor in secret. The neighbor never hears it, but other people do. See, these five deadly sins will hurt and divide the body of Christ. It will keep you from experiencing spiritual growth that God wants you to have, but it also will hinder, will stymie your love for one another. Now, but when you think about spiritual leaders, that could be pastors like myself or other ministers that you've heard, but let's, let's narrow it down to pastors and, and those who are working in the body of Christ. What would you think would be the two most uh, deadly sins committed in this area when we look at Christian workers? It would be envy, and slander. These are very destruct destructive sins. See, it's like this. If someone gets promoted in the church, or if someone is really successful in some endeavor, endeavor, guess what happens? There are some within the body of Christ that are so envious and jealous that they begin to speak against that individual in the body go oh, well, that person didn't deserve it. Well, I know some things about that person that you don't know. Well, think of that. Satan will use these two sins more than any other to divide the church and to destroy the fellowship. It will stop you spiritually from growing and loving one another. Because if you go back to our text and we look at what went before it, Look at what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. It says here, Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. You see, 
You haven't loved each other because you haven't obeyed the truth. Now, when you think of those things, these sins that we've mentioned, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander, these are often hidden in our hearts, as I said in the beginning. We're not even aware sometimes that we're committing those sins. And many of us will even deny that we even committed them. That is why we need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these hidden sins, these deadly sins to us. So then Peter tells us, you know, when we think about asking the Spirit to reveal, Peter tells us to rid ourselves, to put these sins aside. See, the Holy Spirit will convict us and tell us to get rid of these sins of malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Put off these things like a garment. Take them off and replace them. J. Burnham and D. says, We cannot expect God to do everything for us. He has certainly th certain things for us to do. And that's so true. When Peter says, Now rid yourselves of all these things, Vices, these deadly sins, we're supposed to get rid of them. If you look at Ephesians, Paul speaks of the same thing that Peter does. Ephesians chapter 4, 22. It says, you, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. What are we supposed to do with the old self? As, as believers, what's hindering your spiritual growth? What is stopping you from growing and loving each other? Peter says you got to put these things away. Paul says put them away. No, that, that's what he says. You were taught regarding your former way of life. Put off your old self. Now look what he says in verse 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. Do you see what he says? Put off, put on. Peter says the same thing. Put off, put on. And look at verse 31. He says it again, Paul does. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, among, uh, uh, along with every form of malice. He says, get rid of. But then verse 32, he says, be kind and compassionate to each other. Unless you get rid of this, you can't be that. You can't grow spiritually. You can't grow in your love for God. And you, you can't grow in your love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. So what's stopping you from maturing? What's stopping you from loving God? What's stopping you from loving one another? Could it be those five deadly sins, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander? Now let's go back to our text. Notice what Peter says. He says this. Again, he brings this out. And let's, let's look at verse 2. Now he says, remember he says, get rid of these things, right? Get rid of all these sins, all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, and all slander. Then Peter says, as you get rid of this, like Paul says, put on. So like newborn babes crave pure spiritual milk so that you may grow up into your salvation. Now think about, when I think about newborn babies, Marilee and I are just enamored with Rowan. I mean, we just can't wait to see him. Uh, his laughter, his eyes, he's so alive. But you know, Rowan had a problem early on. And the problem was he wasn't getting enough nourishment from his mother. He was always, always wanting more, but never getting enough. And so what happened? Well, they found out that he was tongue-tied. I'd never heard of that before. But being tongue-tied, if you just take the tip of your tongue to the under, uh, underneath your lips, you'll notice 
or feel like almost like a string. And even on the bottom, the same thing. Now, for some babies, they have the bottom run, and it's it's hindering their their drinking. They're not being nourished. For Rowan, he had both. So the procedure was done. He was sore. His mouth was sore. It was hard for him to suck. But now that he is actually maturing this way, and he's learning how to suck, he's growing. He's putting on weight. You see... Those spiritual sins, those deadly sins, is like being tongue-tied. You've been stopped. Something is stopping you from craving. What does Peter say? Craving the pure spiritual milk. You, 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 something has stopped you. You're craving for something else. That malice. That deceit. That hypocrisy. That envy, that slander, there are certain elements that are you're craving because you're jealous. Maybe because you don't want to reveal the true nature of your heart. You want everybody to see the outward. So there's other things you're craving, but you're not able to crave the spiritual milk of the word. So what you need to do is have a procedure done. Paul says, get, Peter says, get rid of. Paul says, put away and put on. That craving of that spiritual milk. No, let's read it again. Like newborn babies. See, that he's saying it's like this. Because newborn babies do crave spiritual milk. Now, is he talking about his readers and to us, to those who are, are, are just new to the faith? No, I don't think he is, but even though we need to have the elementary teachings of the word, we need to grow up in that. But it's a continual growth. It's a craving for God and his words. God speak. We want this more than anything else in our life. But something's stopping you. Just think of that. Craving pure spiritual milk craving God's word so that by it you may grow up into your salvation. That's how you're going to grow, by craving the pure spiritual milk of the word. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, 23 through 25. Notice what it says. For you've been born again, not a perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Do you notice what it says here? That what is about the word of God? It's living. It's imperishable. It's living. It's enduring. Word of God. It'll never end. That's why Peter says, For all men are like grass, and their glory is like flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that we preach to you. Notice also, first P, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Notice what he says to those believers and to, to the disciples. He says, Jesus says, it is written, man will not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You see, we, we desire that. We crave for that. And you see, if you have something else in the way. If you're craving for something else other than God's word and love for God's people, you may be stuck. Stuck with what? Envy. Jealousy. All those five things that Peter spoke of. That those are the things that have stopped us. And so when you think of what Peter's saying, let's go back to our text, 1 Peter chapter 2. It says here, like newborn babies crave spiritual milk, and how are you going to grow up in your salvation? When we mean grow up in your salvation, means that one, you accepted Christ. Now two, you need to continue to grow up in your faith. You need to continually nourish the word of God, you want that more than anything else. To love God, to love his word, and to love other people. 
You see, when we drink in the word of God, what happens to us? Something comes out. What is it? We desire to pray. We worship. You see, you have to drink in the word of God, that pure milk. God speak, God's word. We have to want to hear God's word more than anything else. We crave it like newborn babies. It's something that will never be satisfied because we want that milk. We want that nourishment from the very words of God because we know that when we are nourishing upon the word of God, we will pray, we will worship, but we will love. And so we think about those things. But did you notice the invitation? Verse 3. And this is invitation to all of us here. But this invitation comes by the way of that you put off, got rid of the five deadly sins. He says all these things. And now you've craved the very word of God as a newborn babe. You desire it. You're craving it. You're, you're actually, as it says, you have tasted and you want more. It, it, it's just like how it is. It's like a, your favorite ice cream. And you have your ice cream cone, whether it be chocolate or uh, mint chip, like my wife, she loves chocolate mint chip ice cream. And you take that first lick of the cone, you don't throw it away. It makes or brings about a desire to want more of that. We want more of that very, that, that ice cream. Well, that's the same thing here. That's an invitation to us. If you've gotten rid of these things and now you're craving the spiritual milk of the word and you're growing up in your salvation, your love for God, love for others, now there's an invitation. Now that you have tasted the, the Lord's kindness, now you've tasted that. And where does Peter get this from? Psalm 34. He's taking it from Psalm 34. Notice what it says in verse 34. Uh, notice how, how the psalmist puts it. Verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Think of that. Taste and see that the Lord is now that you have. You have tasted. You have craved the word of God. You are growing up and you see the kindness of God. Think of that. Open your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. And verse 9 says, Blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship open doors to all of his goodness. Young lions on the prowl get hungry, but God seekers are full of God. Craving God. Is that what you're craving? Or maybe you're craving something else. Well, if you are craving something else, Peter says get rid of it because it's stopping you from experiencing the best thing in life. The word of God, the very milk of God, that kindness of God, and that love for others. You see, if you're craving those five sins, and you would never think you would be, but there are times it happens. Get rid of it so that you could take on and be able to, ex to love the word of God, to be able to read it. So the more we crave God's goodness, the less we'll want to crave the worldly options. That, and we fill ourselves with malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. We will not be filling up with the goodness and the love and the word of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I just pray that as we think about these verses, help us here today to, to, to put off, to get rid of those sins. Lord, just expose them for what they are. And, and now you said get rid of, put off. But now we are to put on something. 
were to put on the very spiritual milk, the word of God. Help us with that. As we put off, we'll hunger for you. We'll crave for you and desire you. In Jesus' name, amen.